Good morning, I'm Crystal and welcome to my kitchen. Today is Easter Sunday, so I just want to wish everybody a happy Easter. And this morning, I'm going to make a chocolate cake with a yummy chocolate frosting. This is a special request. My nephews, Cameron and Austin Martin out in California asked me to make a chocolate cake video. So this is for you guys. And I can't think of a better way to spend my Easter morning than doing a special video for my nephews that I love so much. So boys, this is a recipe you can make at home and just ask mommy to help you. We're gonna start with a can of Hershey's cocoa and we're gonna follow the recipe on the back of the can. And I'm sure you can read it without your glasses, but Auntie here needs her glasses to read the recipe on the back. But it's not hard. I'm gonna show you how to do it and then you can make one at home. Then when we get together next time, which I don't know if we're gonna to get to do our family camping trip this summer or not, but the next time we get together, you'll be pros at making this chocolate cake with chocolate frosting, and I will look forward to trying your version of the chocolate cake, okay? So, let's go ahead and get started. I tried to put all the ingredients out that we're gonna need, and I did preheat the oven. So the first instruction says to heat the oven at 350. I did that. We're also gonna need a cup of boiling hot water in this recipe. So you can see here on the stove, I've already got that going. And the first thing we do is we're gonna combine all the dry ingredients into the mixing bowl. So I moved my mixing um, stand over here to the part of the countertop where you guys can see it in the video. And the dry ingredients we're gonna start with is two cups of sugar, okay? So I've got my sugar container out here. And I have my one, one cup measuring, so I'm gonna do two of these. So we've got one. two and right now Uncle John is down working on the boat so when he gets back he's gonna be so surprised the house is gonna smell so yummy like chocolate cake and maybe an Easter ham okay the next ingredient is one and three quarters cup of all-purpose flour and it's okay to use the bleached flour for this recipe so I'm gonna get one a measuring cup that says three quarters cup so we use one of those okay so that's one and three quarters cup of all-purpose flour and then we're gonna use three quarters cup of this yummy cocoa powder your three-quarter cup measuring cup. If you don't have a three-quarter cup, boys, what else could you use? I wish you were here with me so we could do it together, but you could use your quarter cup and you would use three of your three-quarter cups and that would give you the same amount. See? Doing um, cooking projects at home and baking chocolate cakes, you also get to practice your math and it's a fun way to do it, right? Okay, so here is Three quarters cup of Hershey's cocoa mix, or Hershey's cocoa, sorry. Put that in. Make sure it all goes in because we want all that chocolate flavor, right boys? Okay. Now I'm gonna put the lid back on there so I don't spill it. Okay. And then we've got one and a half teaspoon of baking powder. Now, when I was your age, grandma used to let me do all kinds of baking and I loved making cookies. But one time when I was a kid, I mixed up the baking powder with the baking soda. You don't wanna mix those up. So this is the baking powder. And you just, you put your spoon in and then you scrape it across the top so you get a nice level teaspoon. Okay, there we go. So that's one. I'll just double check. It said one and a half. Now we'll go over to my half teaspoon size and do it in. I put it in, I scrape it across the top so it gets a nice level teaspoon. I'll dump that in and I'll close that lid. Okay, our next ingredient is one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. So, go back to my one teaspoon. 
kind of funny that this recipe calls for the exact same quantities. Again, I dip the teaspoon in and I scrape it across the top to make it a nice, even, level teaspoon. And then the half teaspoon. There we go. Okay, what's next? One teaspoon of salt. Okay, one teaspoon. Got the salt over here and just kind of shake it, make it level. Okay, done with that one. Okay, and then it's, I'm going to mix it just a little bit, just a little. Alrighty. Then it says add eggs, milk, oil, and vanilla and beat on medium speed for two minutes. Okay, so we need to add... You want you can always open your eggs into a small bowl first to make sure you don't drop any shells into your cake. I'm gonna take a risk here and I got it no shells but like I said you can open your eggs on top of a bowl before you put them into your cake mix if you want. Need one cup of milk. Okay I'm gonna get my one cup measuring cup. that in. Put my cap back on the milk so I don't spill it. Okay. I think I better add a little bit of extra hot water to my hot water skillet because I think some of it evaporated while it was bubbling. Okay. And then we're going to add half a cup of vegetable oil. Okay, so I'll get my half cup back out. I'll take my vegetable oil and measure that up. Ooh, look at that, boys. I had exactly enough vegetable oil left in my container to make a chocolate cake. It was meant to be this chocolate cake. Okay. And then we're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla. Ooh, I hope we have enough. Hmm, we're getting low on this one. One. Ooh, holy smokes! Look at that. Exactly two teaspoons of vanilla was all we had left. <laughs> Ooh, this chocolate cake is definitely meant to be. Okay, now I'm going to stir that on, um, I'm going to mix that up on medium speed for two minutes. Whew, look at a little bit of, a little bit of cloud of chocolate cocoa coming, cocoa powder coming out of that. And I can see some of the, you can see some of the ingredients are stuck up high on the bowl. So when I stop it, I'll scrape it down. And then I'll continue mixing. So let me just scrape this down a little bit on the sides. Mm -hmm. All right, put it back up. Do it another minute. On medium. water to get ready. The next thing we have to do is we have to grease and flour our baking dish. So I'm going to take a stick of butter that I'm not using in the recipe and I'm just going to rub it all over the inside of the uh, cake pan and then I'm going to add just a little bit of flour and shake it around. That way when we bake our cake, so take the, take the stick of butter and just draw all over the pan. That way
way when we bake our cake, it won't stick to the uh, cake pan. And of course, before you do this, you want to make sure you washed your hands with soap and hot water really well because you're holding the butter. Okay. You could also wear a pair of gloves when you're doing this because this gets a little messy. You just imagine grandma saying that that's probably good advice huh and make sure you do the sides of the cake dish too you want to do the whole you want to do the whole inside okay because we don't want our chocolate cake sticking to the pan we want to be able when we cut it to take out a nice slice of chocolate cake with a oh, yummy chocolate frosting on top right Getting all the spots, all the side parts. Ooh, a little messy. Maybe I should have worn those gloves I just thought of afterwards. That's okay. Auntie doesn't bake a lot, so sometimes I don't think of these little tricks until I'm in the middle of doing it. I could put a little bit of flour in here so that it doesn't stick. Isn't this a funny trick? a little bit of flour in there and then you kind of swoosh it around well sometimes it doesn't swoosh so good you can always spread it we want the butter to stick to all the uh, the flour to stick to all the parts where the butter is yeah that's the trick see how messy this is Whew. Okay, then when you're done, you just kind of tap the outside of the dish to get the extra flour out of there. Okay, boys? See that? It's all buttered up and coated with flour. Okay. Now my hot water is boiling. So the recipe says to take a cup of hot water and add it to our mixing bowl. So I'm gonna pour this into my one cup measuring cup. And then I'll dump that in, just like that. Okay. And then it says, I'll just mix it up a little bit for about a minute. And the batter is going to be really runny and thin. And that's okay. That's what it says right here on the box. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dump it out of here into our cake pan. And then we'll bake it. That's not too bad, huh? I'm going to rinse off my spatula. All right, I'm going to need that. chocolatey. It does smell chocolatey. Okay. And now we're just going to dump this into our cake pan. Just like that. Scrape all the sides so you get all the cake batter in here. Okay. Alrighty. And now we're 
we're going to put it in the oven and we'll cook it for 30 to 35 minutes. So what I'll do is I'll set the timer for 30 minutes and then we'll check it by putting a knife in the center and see if the knife comes out clean. And if not, then you cook it for a few more minutes and check it again. Okay, we'll just set it right in there and we'll set the timer for 30 minutes. And in 30 minutes, we'll check it to see how it's doing, okay? Okay, while the cake is baking, we're gonna go ahead and make the frosting. I washed the mixing bowl so we can start over with that. And again, we're just following the instructions on the back of the Hershey Cocoa Box, okay? So it says half a stick of butter melted. So I went ahead and melted that here on the stove. I'm gonna pour that in. When you're melting your butter, you wanna make sure you don't uh, burn it. You just want melted butter, you don't want burnt butter. And then we need two thirds cup of Hershey cocoa. So, I'm just going to do, well, actually, I don't need my spoon, I can just do it with my measuring cup. So, this is a one third. So, that's one third. And the recipe calls for two thirds, so I need two of these. making a cake okay but it's worth it in the end then we need three cups of powdered sugar so I have that here and we need three cups yeah just double check yep three cups okay I have my one cup measuring cup here Two, and we'll do one more. I'm not trying not to make that fall out of the measuring cup. Three. Okay. It's our three cups here of powdered sugar. And then lastly, oh no, two more things. One third cup of milk. Oh, I think I put the milk away. So hold on, let me grab that. Okay. One third cup of milk. I've melted the butter. <laughs> Whoops, I didn't follow the instructions properly. So I've melted the butter, stir in the cocoa, and then alternately add the powdered sugar and the milk. Whoops, sorry guys, but I think it'll still work. So before I add the milk, I'll just mix this up on low. Then I'll start to add the milk slowly. And that should, that's why I'm not, that's why baking is not my forte. I'm more of a cook, but I think we can adapt it. It'll be okay. okay. All right, there we go. I poured in the milk. Turn it up a little. And then it calls for one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I did find one more little jar of uh, vanilla extract. So I will add that now. I thought I used up the last, but I had a second one. And it's got just enough. So I lucked out on that. sides because it gets uh, up on the sides and then it's not getting included in the mixing. So I've just got to scrape them a little bit.
and I'll just lower it down and scrape the sides one more time. Let it get, make sure I get all the powdered sugar mixed in. spoon. I'm going to dip that in there. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so the frosting is done. Start. And now I'm going to unplug the mixer just to make sure I don't want to have an accident. I sure wish you guys were here with me, Cameron and Austin, because if so, I would let you lick this because that's, that's part of the best part of making the cake is getting to lick the the, um, the spatula, right? Look at all that. Mm -hmm. It would be fun if you could lick that. Like I said, next time we're together, we'll have to make a cake. Or maybe you can make one for me. And then you can uh, lick, the, lick the frosting off of the back, off of the... I'm just going to tap it here on the side. in here because I'm going to need it later but let's just get a little taste of that I'll have to lick that for you mm-hmm mm. yummy okay let me show you what the finished frosting looks like see how when I stir it it has a little bit of um, it's not too runny it has a little bit of thickness to it and this is going to be perfect for spreading on our cake but of course we won't be able to spread it on our cake until the cake is done baking and it has cooled off. So we're gonna set that aside for now. And while we wait for the cake to finish baking, I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup and then we'll be back to finish the cake. Okay, the timer just went off on the chocolate cake in the oven. So we're gonna check that. I use a butter knife, insert it in the center of the cake and see if the knife comes out clean. If not, we will have to um, leave the cake cooking for a couple more minutes. And that's my cat, Sophia, walking into the kitchen. She always wants to know what's going on. Oh, I can just tell from this that this is not done. Because it was kind of jiggly when I pulled the, um, the shelf out. Okay, I'm going to put it for another five minutes. And I'm going to show you why. So, see here? The knife did not come out clean. There's cake on it. So, we'll wash that. I set the timer for another five minutes. And then we'll check it again. It's always better to check it rather than to assume because you don't want your cake to be underdone and you also don't want it to get overcooked and burnt. So I'm fine checking it again. Okay, the timer went off again on the cake. So we're gonna check it again with a clean knife and see if it's done. Oh yeah, the knife came out squeaky clean. So our cake is done. I'm gonna take it out of the oven. I'm gonna set it here on top of a rack, on top of the counter so it can cool. Then when it's cool, we'll put the frosting on. So our cake is nice and cool, and we're ready for the last step, which is to put the chocolate frosting on our cooled cake. So this is the easy part, boys, and I know you're gonna like this part. You just take your frosting and spread it all over the top. And you can put it on nice and thick because there's nothing else to do with this frosting except put it on the cake. See how easy that is? Okay, I'm just going to try to get it in all the nooks and crannies and try to spread it out evenly over the cake. I know my 
nephews Cameron and Austin. I know you guys love to cook. We've, we've had a lot of fun cooking things together, haven't we? And next time we're together, we'll do some more cooking. We'll have to start thinking about what we're gonna make. Hopefully chocolate cake will be on our list, right? Maybe some barbecue. Mmm, we all like barbecue, don't we? As a matter of fact, your dad is really good at making barbecue, isn't he? Okay. That's just about all of the frosting. We got a nice thick layer of frosting here. Getting the last of it out of the bowl. Okay, oh boy. And the part I wish I could let you do if you were here in person is licking the spoon. Mmm, our frosting came out perfectly. So I hope you have fun making your own cake, Cameron and Austin, and I can't wait to see pictures and to see you both again. Love you so much. And if you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Have a good Easter.